During nighttime raids, bombers were subjected to attack from either flak guns or enemy interceptors. In order to track and target the bombers accurately, they needed to be illuminated by searchlights. The intent of this video is to review the 11 searchlight countermeasures and tactics bombers adopted to minimize the likelihood of getting searchlight cone. German AA guns were aimed by radar at the start of 1941, as discussed in this declassified 1945 AAF Evaluation Board document titled Flak Defense of Strategic Targets in Southern Germany. Searchlights were thought to be somewhat obsolete as flak guns could now be directed by radar. However, the Allies adopted radar countermeasures which rendered the gun-laying radar system inoperative. Radar countermeasures necessitated reintroduction of the importance of searchlights as part of Germany's nighttime integrated air defense system. German radar technology lagged three years behind the Allies, as discussed on this page from a headquarters Air Material Command document titled, Where We Stand. A World War II three-year weapon system lag is a significant deficiency. Allied radar jamming countermeasures were very effective. Japanese anti-aircraft equipment and tactics were far behind what existed in Germany, as relayed in this August 1945 military intelligence document titled German Technical Aid to Japan. The Japanese were deficient in World War II standard direction finding and AA predictor equipment. Japan's gun-laying radar was not effective, as discussed in this February 1946 document titled Survey of Japanese Anti-Aircraft Artillery. They depended entirely on searchlights for tracking night raiding B-29s. On some missions, B-29s were not fired upon since the bombers flew above the overcast. On some missions, around 100 or so total rounds were fired on the hundreds of attacking bombers. Japan will improve their searchlight defenses as night bombing progresses from a June 1945 21st Bomber Command Air Intelligence Report. Black and fighters are dependent on target illumination by searchlight. Any effort to apply searchlight countermeasures will reduce bomber losses. If the radar that directs the pickup searchlight breaks down or is rendered ineffective by radar countermeasures, then the searchlight will be aimed by sound directors from a 1945 ADI report titled German Flak. Once the pickup searchlight starts tracking the bomber, the other satellite searchlights will join in the bomber coning. The satellite searchlights are visually aimed. Once coned by the satellite searchlights, the pickup light will disengage and seek the next plane. Radar countermeasures consisted of either deploying chaff or window and electronic jamming, as discussed on these highlighted videos in the channel's FLAC playlist. I know what you're thinking. What does Bob Marley have to do with World War II radar countermeasures? This is a different type of jamming. These countermeasures virtually paralyze German and Japanese gun and searchlight laying radar. It is much more difficult to pick up a bomber than holding it in a searchlight cone, as discussed on this page from a 1945 Military Intelligence Service Bulletin titled Timely Tactical Topics 2. Searchlight countermeasures should be focused on avoiding the initial pickup rather than escaping a locked-in and tracking searchlight. Once a searchlight beam cones a bomber, ground artillery flat guns will fire at the bomber, adopting the same daylight tracking and firing visual prediction methods. Escaping a searchlight cone requires violent action, and this source recommends B-29s not take evasive action if coned by a Japanese searchlight. Various studies have found this to be rarely effective. So, to keep from being coned by searchlights, you need to defeat its tracking radar, which itself can be defeated by chaff and electronic jamming, sound director, and the visually directed searchlight itself. These images show the German ring trumpet sound director. These two crewmen are listening to the bomber with stethoscopes. One listens in the azimuth direction, the other in the elevation direction. A lag calculator is needed to account for the bomber's sound time delay reaching the sensor. The future position of the bomber is provided to the master searchlight. These images show the Japanese Model 90 sound locator. It was the most common type deployed. This map shows the location of heavy caliber AA guns, searchlights, radar, and sound locators surrounding the Japanese cities of Osaka and Kobe. The sound locators are shaded. If the bomber can defeat both the radar and sound locators, the searchlight crews will not be able to pick up the bomber. There were several countermeasures and tactics to defeat the sound locator. A bomber can take advantage of the sound time lag. Sound locators need to track the bombers for a minimum duration to calculate its future position. If the bomber takes evasive action, the sound director's lag computer will struggle to accurately predict the bomber's future position. Recommend a course change of 5 degrees every 90 seconds to confuse the sound predictor position lag calculations. A bomber can desynchronize their engines. 
U.S. bombers synchronize their engines to reduce airframe vibrations. B-29s have had some success with this tactic. Sound director operators will try to balance the bomber's engine sound in each ear. This will be difficult or impossible if the engines are desynchronized. A bomber cannot be heard at altitudes above 6,000 feet if the engines have been throttled back. A bomber can throttle back over known sound director sites while in a shallow power glide. Crews have indicated that dropping open beer bottles have caused flak batteries to hold their fire and shut searchlights off. The noise of a falling beer bottle will make an unnatural wailing sound which will confuse the sound directors. There are a couple direct searchlight countermeasures that can be adopted. You can paint the bomber with a searchlight resistant reflective paint like this B-29. The combat effectiveness of painted B-29s against searchlights is described on this page from a June 1945 21st Bomber Command Air Intelligence Report. A squadron's B-29 undersides were painted high gloss black to assess its effect on searchlights. Combat results were favorable. The squadron attacked Tokyo twice. The searchlight lost the plane after one minute. None of the painted planes were damaged. Based on successful combat trials, all B-29s were to be delivered with high-gloss black undersides, as directed in this June 1945 Headquarters 20th Air Force's weekly newsletter. High-gloss paint will be delivered to the 20th Air Force's so existing bombers can be painted. Combat results of two operational B-29 squadrons have proved the merits of the painted planes. Searchlight saturation attacks are described on this page. The Japanese will only fire on bombers cone and searchlights. Saturation of the target area will saturate the searchlights. The RAF adopted these tactics successfully in the ETO overwhelming German searchlight batteries. Attack with maximum force, minimum time over the target, approach the target at different directions and altitudes. Experience has shown bombers attacking at lower altitudes at night will experience less losses than those flying during high altitude daylight raids. Searchlights and therefore flat gunners will generally target the planes at the lowest altitudes, leaving the bombers at the higher altitudes free from attack. 21st Bomber Command searchlight experiences and lessons learned from the first five March 1945 nighttime firebomb missions are summarized on this page from a 1945 incendiary operations phase analysis document. Searchlights were a critical part in Japan's ability to attack bombers with flat guns. At altitudes of 5,000 feet, gunners were confident they could take out the lights with the bombers' 50 caliber machine guns. Turrets were loaded with ammo on subsequent night missions so the blister gunners can open fire on the searchlights. Bomber crews indicated Japanese searchlights were turned off when under bomber strafing attacks. Other searchlight countermeasures included. Rope will be deployed to counteract ground radar. Rope is chaff or window. The bomber's engines will be desynchronized. Pre-raid fighter sweeps of the flak batteries would help, as would painting the bombers with high-gloss black paint. The ammo carried and gunner instructions for the firebombing mission to Kobe are listed on this page from a March 1945 tactical mission report. Each turret will be loaded with 200 rounds maximum. The tail turret will only target bomber interceptors and only open fire if fired upon first. The side blister gunners will only fire on ground searchlights, not fighters. The effect of searchlights on bomber crews who are coned is consistent with testimonies from both night deployed RAF and 8th Air Force crews. Crews were blinded and lost visibility. Fortunately, the Japanese lack searchlight fighter coordination. The fighter's greatest challenge is just finding the bomber at night. Bombers can be found if coned by searchlights and taking ground fire. Bombers should start evasive action when under nighttime fighter attack. A drop in altitude of 500 feet should throw off the attacker. Don't hold the bomber steady to give the tail gunner a clean shot. Fighters have an advantage when approaching a bomber from the rear at night. One of the errors the Japanese made in attacking night bombers is coning too many searchlights on a single plane. In one instance, 30 searchlights were illuminating a single plane. Japanese doctrine limits four searchlights per plane. This is a waste of resources which allows many planes over the target area without illumination and therefore under no risk of attack. This page summarizes the 11 searchlight countermeasures and tactics as discussed in the video. The countermeasures can be linked to their effect on radar, sound director, visually directed searchlight, or target saturation. If you've enjoyed this searchlight countermeasures and tactics deep dive review, please consider engaging with the video by liking, commenting, and or subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.